Uh, I have a playlist for uh, parents of babies in the NICU where I'm covering many different problems that these babies go through. Today I will be speaking about why we do brain ultrasound scans in your baby who is born premature. So uh, you, you're familiar with ultrasound scans, you have had it during the pregnancy and ultrasound is nothing but uh, high frequency sound waves and uh, there is a probe which emits piezoelectric, uh, the sound waves through vibration of the piezoelectric crystal stimulated by electricity and this goes through and then it's uh, reflected back by the tissues and this is picked up by the sensor in the probe. So you can see the image clearly on the screen and according to that you interpret. Ultrasound doesn't have any radiation exposure, it's safe and it can be done in the small babies as well. Uh, we do something called a cranial or brain ultrasound for the premature babies through a small spot here called the anterior fontanel. Uh, I have a short video on what the fontanel is, you can refer to that. And when the probe is placed, you can see the inside of the brain. Uh, because the skull bone is not ossified and the membrane is covering it, the sound waves can pass through. If the bone is there and for an adult, for example, we cannot do the scan of the brain with an ultrasound. So in a premature baby, the, the fluid filled cavity inside the middle of the brain is called the ventricle and the bottom of that has a cellular area which is very vascular as well. There is a high risk of bleeding. So we call it the germinal matrix area at the base of the ventricle. The ventricle is a fluid filled structure in the middle of the brain. It doesn't have any uh, specific function apart from the support but it does have uh, tissues in the bottom of it which produce the fluid which circulates all around. That's called the cerebrospinal fluid or CSF and uh, there is a CSF circulation pathway. Uh, the other important factor is that the germinal matrix at the base of the ventricles when the fetus is developing, this is the area where the brain cells are developing and they go to the rest of the brain. That's a migration uh, pattern that happens. So a bleeding that happens in the germinal matrix area is called a germinal matrix bleed and uh, when the bleed starts expanding, it's called intraventricular hemorrhage. You have different grades, so you have grade 1, grade 2, grade 3 and grade 4. Grade 1 is also called the germinal matrix hemorrhage which is confined to that tissue area. Uh, previously we used to say that germinal matrix bleed uh, doesn't have much impact on the future but now we know that in an extreme premature baby because the brain is still in the stage of cellular development and proliferation migration a germinal matrix bleed can have an impact on the development but this is only the extreme premature babies beyond 27 28 weeks a grade 1 or a grade 2 bleed should not impact much sometimes this bleed happens when the baby is in the womb and in term babies you may see a slight brightness or a cystic change, we call it a germinal matrix cyst if the scan is done for any reason or even in the pregnancy scans you may see that this again doesn't impact the development significantly. And uh, the grade 2 is where the blood is coming into the ventricular cavity but it is not very big. Grade 3 is a bigger bleed, the ventricular cavity starts enlarging and a grade 4 is where uh, the enlargement of the ventricle with the bleed has compressed on the blood vessels surrounding it and this causes the uh, area of the brain tissue itself to be affected which is called a periventricular infarction. So uh, this becomes more serious, the grade 3 and grade 4 bleeds impact the development and if you say a premature baby has a 20%, 30% risk of future neurodevelopmental problems, a baby with a grade 3 or grade 4 has a 60 to 70% risk, so it doubles or uh, triples the risk. And uh, when the baby has any grade of bleed, this blood can block the CSF pathway and uh, we develop something called post hemorrhagic hydrocephalus or ventriculomegaly to start with which can become a hydrocephalus. So we monitor the scans at regular intervals, the units have protocols, some units start doing on day 3 and then they may repeat the scan according to the maturity of the baby. We do scans in all babies below 32 weeks, the frequency of scans depends on the immaturity of the baby, the more immature the more frequently we use. For example, a baby at 30 to 32 weeks, we may do one scan at birth and one scan at discharge, that's fine. Some units do after 10 to 14 days and again at discharge. For a baby below 30 weeks, 26 to 30 weeks, we may do it uh, by 3 to 4 days, by 10 days and then every 2 weeks uh, till they are more mature and close to discharge as well. The very tiny babies, we tend to do uh, scans again after day 2 to day 3, not to disturb them too much in the beginning and we may need after end of 7 days, 14 days. The risk of bleed is maximum in the first 4 days. So if your baby didn't develop a bleed in that time, the chances of its developing is very low. Of course, it can happen in some babies who are unwell or who develop a complication uh, like infection, bleeding tendencies and so on. But in general, the risk of bleeding is less. 
I mentioned delayed cord clamping in another video and delayed cord clamping is one of the things that helps with the hemodynamic stability of the baby. Antenatal steroids that the mother receives reduces the risk of uh, IVH as well. So uh, timely management of the respiration uh, problems that the baby has. Uh, there is something called the IVH prevention bundle which the unit may be applying as well to reduce the risk of bleed. The main concern with the intraventricular hemorrhage is the impact on neurodevelopment. Again, I have a playlist on neurodevelopment. I've explained why premature babies are at risk and what we can do. And I'll discuss that again separately as well. I hope this is useful. Thank you.